All right. Well, before we begin, um, and I know it's not on the sheet, but did you guys see that now, um, Doctor? I think his name's Amali or, or Amalu, the one who did the concussion. Yeah, the doctor movie. for the the dolphins, right? The yeah, one that like the latest saga is that he wants him to retire. Wants Tua to retire? Yeah, he wants Tua to retire. Not going to happen. <laughs> I mean, I, I I don't think it's the right choice for Tua to like retire after something like that. I think that's a funny way to spell Will Lutz, because Will Lutz should retire after what happened on Sunday morning. Just saying. <laughs> yeah, I mean, probably should. Um, I'm just going to say this now itself, like, you know, the doctor shouldn't have even allowed um, Tua to go back into the game itself. Mm -hmm. I don't think, you know, th this looks really, really bad for the organization going for it itself, too. But um, as far as retiring, I mean... If if he keeps on getting injuries, yeah, like that going forward, yes, I agree. He probably should retire. But if he can come back stronger than ever after you know these last bit of setbacks, then I don't think he should. If he can go out there and still prove that he can be, you know, a great quarterback in the NFL without taking any kind of hits like that, then I don't see why he should retire. Yep. Well. I just figured I'd bring that up before we begin, because that was a big story last week. It's still a big story going into this week, the concussions and everything. But with that, um, you know, of course, we'll be talking some other NFL news later. We'll be talking the MLB playoffs. We got our picks coming up, as well as our Week 5 picks and Week 6 Thursday night pick, um, and a pretty interesting thing that happened on Monday Night Football. You'll have to stay tuned for that. But of course, Jason, I'm going to let you take it away. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we do know everything with, you know, Cole Beasley. He gets released by the Buffalo Bills, ends up being in free agency, took him a while to get signed by a team, finally gets picked up by the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, plays one game with them, and then decides, you know what? At 33 years old, I have a wife, I have a kid, I'm just going to up and retire after 11 years. Um, you know, probably one of the better slot receivers, uh, you know, in the NFL, in Cole Beasley, and now he's going to be taking, spending, taking some time and spending it with his family and to be a dad. Um, good for him. I think it's best to you know, say when it when you had enough and then when time is time and you can't really, you know, give any more to the f football field than to be, you know, away from the game and, you know, be a family man. So I, I give Cole Beasley all the respect in the world for doing that itself. So, um, let me just say, there's two things. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt, but there's two things no I take from this. Number one, you know, Giselle's got to be punching air thinking, you know, how come he thinks this way but my husband doesn't? And then number two... <laughs> One man is arrogant and the other is not. And then number two, she's probably calling um, Cole Beasley's wife right now and thinking, hey, um, are you sure you want to hang on to him? Because, you know, we can trade anything, anytime you want. Just saying. <laughs> Yeah, I, I don't know what's going truly on with the whole Tom Brady thing. I mean, Divorce we probably should have... that's all I heard. We probably should have even put that down, because that's kind of big news, too. I should have talked about that instead of Tua. It just didn't come to mind at first. Um, well, if anybody doesn't know, yes, um, it's heating up that Giselle and Tom Brady are going to be uh, filing for divorce. They got well, divorced. They're talking uh, to lawyers. Really, There's really yeah, no yeah. confirmation on whether it's going to be a divorce or not. So it sounds like it's headed that way. I feel like it's going to be heading that way. As far as the Beasley situation, honestly, I mean, he's had a 
good enough career. I don't think it's Hall of Fame worthy, but he's had a good enough career to say that it's, you know, enough is enough. Yeah, I'd have to agree with that. Um, so I'm going to go on to my next takeaway, the Buffalo Bills, who are com- who came off a two-point loss to the Dolphins. That first half looked kind of rough. They were down 20-3. to three. Um, Then in the second quarter, towards the end, they, they come, they score before, you know, halftime, make it 10-point game. Then all of a sudden, they hit the, that gas, they, they, they put the foot on the gas pedal and didn't ease off at all. Mm-hmm. As they came back and won the game 23-20 to as the Baltimore Ravens' second time this season uh, blow a big lead in the second half. I, I don't know what is going on with this Baltimore Ravens team, but they, mm-hmm. they, they seem to be coming the become the next coming of the Atlanta Falcons and blowing big leads. Um, as far as the Buffalo Bills, congratulations on getting the, the win going to 3-1. and one. Um, Finally proving that they can win a close game because they, they've been saying like for such a Super Bowl team, they don't seem to be able to win in close games. Well, th- this game kind of proved that, yes, they can. <laughs> they just need the right kind of players to build around it. You know, because having a guy like Jordan Poyer certainly uh, changed the dynamic of that defense with having two picks on Lamar Jackson. And this is also the first time that the Buffalo Bills have came back, come back from being down 17 points since 2011. And you want to know their opponent? It was week three against the New England Patriots when Ryan Fitzpatrick mm-hmm. became Fitzmagic and came back in the second half and beat Tom Brady's yeah. New England Patriots off of a game-winning field goal. I do remember that. I don't want to. I think not. I do. Because I the same thing happened eleven years after but, the fact. But do you really want history to repeat itself? Before I dive into this part, do you really want history to repeat itself there? Because if you look at the games against New England after that, I'm pretty sure every single one was a wipeout. At least yeah. for the next three or four of them. But, you know, Before, obviously you this know, is not divisional, so I don't think you'll see that repeat. But And obviously no. different roster, different time. Now, as far as the Bills, um, what I will say is I thought at halftime, I'm in the cooler. I was at work, so um, I'm reading it, and I'm like, man, am I going to have to come on here and actually talk some sense into this and say, man, you know, I think we got to stop the this is our year Bills Mafia stuff until they can beat a legitimate team but then it's right. but then the second half implosion and to be honest I, scr- I i ripped up those notes okay figuratively <laughs> obviously i don't keep notes and if i were to write them down my handwriting i would never be able to read it to you guys but um <laughs> but figuratively speaking you know i ripped up the the points on that because you know what they They proved themselves in that game, in a game that I thought was going to be ugly from the looks of it at the beginning. Mm -hmm. Of course, not as good as Baltimore's choking against the Dolphins, because that was in one quarter. But still, you know, something that John Harbaugh is going to have to fix. Yeah, for a team that is supposed to be oh so good, um... (sighs) Yeah, um, yeah, and this is just giving the Bengals all new life right now in this division. I mean, it is, this this whole division right now, the NFC, the or not not the NFC, the AFC North mm-hmm. is very wide open between the Baltimore Ravens, the Pittsburgh Steelers, mm-hmm. and the Cincinnati yeah. Bengals. I mean, yeah, maybe you can add the Browns in there too because I think each team I think is the what Browns two over two. the Steelers right now. The Steelers just don't look good. I, I think the Browns are leading the division right now, too. Or maybe, no, maybe it's the Bengals. I don't know. But I think that, it's a three-way you know, tie right now, but I could be wrong. The AFC North is about as wide open as the NFC West is. So, Oh, the NFC West it, is nuts right now. It, it, it's kind of crazy what is going on with those two divisions. Like It could be anybody that wins that division. 
And, and to continue on that side note, let me just say, who in week five would have thought we'd be talking about a four-way tie in the NFC West? I could tell you yeah, I didn't I think we'd be talking. It. See, I thought we'd be talking Seahawks 0-4, Rams maybe 3-1. and Right. And the, See, the crazy thing oh, is, no. this was also a division that we thought every team in that division was going to make the playoffs. Last no, year, last year, not this two. year. Another year after we said that, after you said that statement, now we're heading into a year where every single team has the same record and all fighting for first place right now, mm -hmm. which I never would have thought I would ever and, say in 2022 that all four of those teams have a chance of winning that division. But, but, add, in, but add in this as well. Did you ever think in your wildest dreams you would ever talk about Geno Smith leading in completion percentage? Oh, no. Heck no. 78% well, so not. far. And I never would have thought I would say that Geno Smith would have had a better game than Russell Wilson did. Like. Yeah. Things you thought you'd never see, you're seeing this year. And trust me, we're not in the Matrix. Folks. I'm going to say this now. If Geno Smith can somehow help the Seahawks get into the playoffs, it might just save Pete Carroll's career. And that would be a downside to this. Yes, this it would. This took an ugly turn real quick, but yeah, I know. we got We're a little sidetracked. But as far as the Buffalo Bills, I will say this is, this is a proving statement here. This is also a defense, mind you, that in the second half has outscored their opponents 63-7 to seven mm -hmm. in the second half. And the defense has only allowed one touchdown in all the second half through four games. That's insane. They are the best de you know, defense that can make it. They're the best adjustment-based um, team heading out of halftime, especially mm -hmm. on both sides of the ball, which I think is insane. If you told me that the Buffalo Bills would be able to hold their opponents to only seven points through four games, I would probably call you a liar. Because the defense, yeah, it looks very strong, but there's so many pieces that are you know, missing from that defense. No Micah Hyde for the rest of the year. No Tredavious White, who has come back to practice, but won't return back or got cleared from PUP, but has not returned to practice until he's ready, which could be next week. I, I'm thinking it's going to be next week against Kansas City. I think he's he, he's got I've heard I feel rumors like he, week eight. he's going to have that I feel like he's going to play in that game against Kansas City. I've he's heard, going to. I've heard rumors week eight, but I, you know, they, I think what they're doing is they're going to take their time with that. But I will say Kyer Alam has been one hell of a rookie corner, and so has Christian Benford. Yes, Benford is hurt right now, but Elam, hmm. I think he's one of the best up-and-coming shutdown corners in the NFL. Yes, he's a rookie, hmm. but he hasn't really been giving up many yards or touchdowns at all through four weeks hmm. as a rookie. And then you know what that reminds me a lot of? Tredavious White. I think Elam can be another Tredavious White-like player. And if you could get him and Alam, both on the same side, both on the same page, that secondary is going to be probably one of the better secondaries in the NFL. Yes, I get it. You know, you only have Poyer out there. But with Poyer being out there, having the kind of year that he's been putting together on a contract year makes a strong case that Buffalo might just have to pull the trigger and re-sign him in the offseason. Mm -hmm. But that's all I'm going to take say about this. I'm going to go to my last takeaway, kind of make it uh, short, fast, to the point. Tyler Hero, who it was the sixth man of the year for the Miami Heat, signs a four-year $130 million contract extension. Um, now, the real question is, after the kind of year that he's had with Miami, do you think it's well-deserved that he got this contract extension? I call myself a Heat fan. First off, um, and I still consider myself one if I had to root for an NBA team. Um, but I will say, what I saw year two from Tyler Hero, I never thought he would bounce back after that. I'm like, he's just not as good as we think he is. 
and he bounced back. He played well. I think it's work that, I mean, if you compare it to the top players in the game and how much they make, it's well worth the investment for four years, 130. That's mild compared to what some of these guys make. So I mean, it's, it, I will say it's a lot of money for somebody that's going to be coming off the bench, but... I, I don't think in today's day and age it is. I think if we were talking like five, ten years from now, and we did the show five, ten years ago, we'd be saying that right now, that it's too much. Right. But I feel like in today's climate, and based on how everyone's valued of late, if you want to call it valued, you know... It's average, I would say, for a guy who's a sixth right. man and a decent scorer. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I honestly think what well, this, this is. He's heading into his third season this year, right? Yeah, third or fourth. Okay, so I'm, I'm really thinking that he's gonna, you know, only take a step above. I mean, this Heat team as a team that is at least a championship contender every single year. Um, I think they had the right pieces in place to be able to compete in the East. I mean, yeah, there's a lot more teams that, you know, are going to be poised and ready and try to, you know, take it off. But I think the Heat can still be in that discussion. There's so many teams in the East right now. I mean, even Cleveland is now in a discussion. I think the East, I I will say this now, I think the East is becoming almost as powerful as the West is. Just looking at who is on, on the team's Right now, I mean, you got Kevin Durant um, on the Nets. You have Giannis on the Bucks. You have um, Donovan Mitchell on the Cavs. You have Tyler, you know, Jimmy Butler and, you know, Bam Adebayo and Tyler here on Heat. Like, I'm not saying, like, mm-hmm. then you have the Knicks that could be in that discussion, too. Like, there's just so many teams on the East that is always in it. And, and Boston, yes. I mean, there's Boston, mm-hmm. too. And then you look at the West, and like, West still looks good. But I think the East is starting to become, like, almost as balanced as the West is when it comes to playoff teams. And Mm -hmm. it's going to make for some interesting basketball heading into the season, I feel like. We shall see, honestly. I think it'll be like how the NFL season has started out, where we only have one undefeated team, and it's just, you know, chaos below that. So I'm wondering if we could see that. Yeah, I mean, it could be possible. Um, All right, well, uh, that's it for my takeaways. I'm going to honestly um, send it over to Brian I'm for not, his. Oh, sorry. Again, I'm interrupting, but um, apparently I can't wait to say what I'm going to say. So let's get right to <laughs> it. Um, you know, so the Chargers, um, they started out well. I think they were up 24 nothing at the half if I'm not mistaken. Um, And it looked like they were going to steamroll Houston and, you know, beat them probably in the 40s. Well, it didn't quite happen that way, and they only won by 10. Even still, I don't feel this is a statement win whatsoever, as much as it is a bounce back. And frankly, I'd even use that term loosely. It's not that I don't think they played a good game. It's the fact that they almost blew a lead once again. It's the fact that, you know, they kind of didn't play very well. Um, And, I mean, they're 2-2, and which is the important thing, but I'm still cautiously optimistic at best. Um, I didn't watch too much of the game either. The AFC West is definitely certainly a, like, up there for grabs as well. I mean, yeah, the Chiefs are ultimately leading that division at what yeah. three and one. Yeah, and I wouldn't even consider the Chiefs a lock yet, to be honest. I don't think so either. Honestly, I, mean, I think that they should you know, be honestly two and two right now. I, mean, I really do think yeah. that. I think truly that um, the Chargers should be the team that's three and one right now, and I'm pretty I mean, sure that you're agreeing if, with me. If, if they play, um, if they played a little bit more inspired, I'd a hundred percent agree with that. The problem is it does, you know. Like I said, I'm sorry, you know. I will agree that they should have beaten Kansas City. Um, mm-hmm. you know, 
I would even argue, well, actually, I can't even really argue that Kansas City should have lost to Tampa because, I mean, mm. you know, but everyone's like, oh, it was a blowout. No, it wasn't. They were within 10. Okay. The Chiefs defense shit the bed yet again against Tom Brady. I mean, I will agree and, that, like, you yeah, know, the Bucks have been up and down all year. I mean, I really don't. Yeah. Thing that um, Brady's mindset is in the right place but you to be playing football right now. I'm not gonna lie, you didn't blow him out. You played you played backyard football against him. Half of your scores were on backyard football plays. Okay, don't give me <laughs> that you blew them out. Okay, you know you just straight up outsmarted them by playing backyard football. Right. Okay, you didn't win the game. Okay, you. You kind of just, you know, stole it, is I guess the way to put it. And you got lucky to score 41, but I digress hmm. from that. Um, the Chargers, of course, will have, to me, the real test this week on the East Coast. Of course, they'll be playing the Browns, and the Browns are surprisingly good with Jacoby Brissett at QB. But you look at the backfield, and the backfield is still the anchor of that team. So, I'm nervous. Yeah, like Nick Chubb. Yeah, so I'm not going to lie. I'm nervous, but I'll make my pick later, um, and we'll see what happens. Um, right. We were talking last week and the week before, and I believe even the week before that, about Aaron Judge and how he could be the next Triple Crown winner, the first one since Miguel Cabrera about eight, you know, nine, ten years ago. That talk got put to an end. And I'm even happier to announce that it was a Minnesota twin that put a stop to the Triple Crown. Um, <laughs> Minnesota Twins player Luis Har- Arias ruined Judge's chances at the AL Triple Crown by taking the batting title with a 316 average. Um, Of course, that was .004 better than Aaron Judge's. And if you want to add insult to injury, the Yankees wouldn't let him play the final game to go after the batting title. That's lame. (laughs) So, yeah, the the Judge sat out the Yankee season finale. Um, and Luis Harayas kind of just sealed the deal. Um, of course, though, Aaron Judge did get one record. He broke Roger Maris's record for the most home runs in the AL. Take it like a grain of salt because, again, in the steroid era, I just don't feel that much – I don't feel it can be as impressive. You know. I mean, I don't want to say – I don't want to accuse him, but I'm just saying, you know, it's based on what other players have done around him. You know, I don't even think Luis Harayas is saying at 316 is impressive. I just think it's good because he stopped a triple crown. (laughs) That's true. And giving it to Um, Yankee. You know, that's a hell of a feat. Um, Of course, you know, a true holder of the record, like the all-time record of all of the MLB is, uh, look it up, yeah, it is Barry Bonds at like 73 or something like that. Of course, you can't really There's my thoughts. That. There's my thoughts after the asterisk. <laughs> um, but as far as sitting him out, I mean... If, if he already, like, there's, like, what, they play, like, 160-something games. Like, m- having him set out that last game, at, I feel like it makes no sense. He I mean, could have had him has, win the Triple Crown, but they I guess it buy. makes sense because you want to keep him healthy. But but look at the grid, the, or look at the playoff picture. They have a bye. That's the, that's the thing that bugs me. I mean, and I, if I was Aaron Judge, I'd be livid sitting there on the sidelines. I'd be like, pinch yeah, hit I mean, me now. I mean, still played and still been able to, you know, you know, relax and get, 
you know, healthy before playing the divisional round because, you know, they played a wild card beforehand to determine yeah. who they're going to play up against. Well, no, um, they play in the divisional series because they got the bye. Yeah, that's for what being I was talking about. Record, second I, best record. Yeah, yeah. The, wild, okay. the wild card is first, wild but they, like, they, first, they right. would, yeah, they would figure out who they would have to play in the divisional round. That's yeah. what I was referring to. But. Um, as far as your twins there, I'm sorry. I mean... They collapsed. You know, they collapsed. It is what it is. Um, you know, best of luck to all the teams in the playoffs. I'll be rooting for the Astros because, oh, shoot, I probably shouldn't have said that. Um, but, you know, <laughs> I guess we'll right. circle back around after the break. But before we go to break, I got one more story to talk about. And it is Syracuse football, and for once, it's not negative news. No, no. Syracuse is now ranked 22nd in the AP poll. This is the first time since 2019 they have been ranked by the Associated Press. And, oh, add in. So here's the thing. They're, four, they're five wins so far. Um, so they beat UConn, a conference independent, 48-14. They crushed Louisville 31 to seven. That is a conference opponent. Um, they beat mm -hmm. Purdue in quite a nail biter. And I watched part of the game at the gym. I watched the other half at home, and it was an insane game. Um, they barely squeaked one out against Virginia, and then, as expected, they absolutely obliterated Wagner 59 to nothing. Um, <laughs> so. That said, they now play a team that's going to be ranked higher than them next Saturday, um, October 15th, number 14 ranked NC State. <sighs> mm. See, I consider Purdue a challenge, but I look at Connecticut being conference independent. Um, right. I look at Virginia. You know, Virginia is always kind of that middle of the road, but the fact that they destroyed Louisville... Um, you know, I think speaks volumes being in conference. Right. So I, I think it's good that they're ranked. I think they deserve to be ranked. But again, I stress looking ahead, you know, NC State Clemson, number five in the country, they go on the road to play them. And then they come back to the dome and play Notre Dame. That's insane. So the next three games are no cakewalk you know right well i mean i guess we'll find out how good of a syracuse team this is i mean i think they deserve to be ranked yeah i mean the bees ranked 22nd that's really good because you know that's a top 25 rank by the associated press itself but um i think like it would be a little bit more um, earned if it was against like a lot more conference opponents than you know who they've really truly played up against. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, beating Louisville that was you know good. You know, and this is, of course the college that um, Lamar Jackson came out of. So I mean, Louisville has been a decent, good you know college. They got a good basketball and football um, team. So Syracuse is. Definitely a really good under the radar kind of team at five and zero. I feel like, but I feel like I gotta see more out of them before I can really say they could, you know, make a um, mm -hmm. push. I guess I don't know. I mean, I'd say that's a fair assumption. I, I again, there's no college football playoff in their future. There's no. It's more the higher bowl games that I look at with this. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, again, take it like a grain of salt because they're not going to make the college football playoff. I think that's an unrealistic expectation, no. but you know, I think for one, this saves Dino Babers because, you know, when we left the Clemson game last year, I know one thing's for sure. And you remember it. I was fuming. I think half the fans going out of the dome were just fuming about it, you know, saying that Dino didn't deserve to have his job after that game management. Um, right. So, 
you know, I know a lot of fans were saying that, and I feel like this is redemption now. And also, this is good for Tucker, their running back, because keep in mind, Tucker was in the Heisman race last year. Um, mm -hmm. And he is going to be considered, I believe, a middle-of-the-draft pick, you know, a day two or a day, an early day three pick. So I feel this is good for Syracuse. I think it's good to see them get this exposure as number 22. And again, it's right. going to boost Tucker's Heisman odds. And if it and if it boosts his Heisman odds and the fact that he's getting national exposure now, that's also going to boost his draft stock. He could be borderline day one before this is all said and done. I don't want to jump the gun, but you know. Well, I mean, I guess it all depends on how how well he plays for the rest of the year, because that could really increase his draft stock too. Yeah. And we'll probably talk about it when we get closer to the draft, um, but I would say right now, based on what I've seen, probably early day, early middle day two. Right. Right now. Um, but, you know, I feel that's the biggest part of Syracuse being ranked 22nd, um, is him. I think this is big for him, and I think this is big for a couple of those defensemen that are in the draft stock right now. So, but with that, let's take our break. When we come back, we're going to talk some NFL news. We're also going to make our World Series picks. I kind of already blurted out my favorite, not realizing it. Um, <laughs> but, you know, we'll go forward with it anyway. Um, and then, of course, our um, Week 5 picks and Tinkle on this. That's all coming up right after the break. Since I like going off the rails, um, I also just want to say Happy National Coaches Day. Um, that was on Friday. Um, you know, so, so any of the coaches that are listening out there, you know, thanks for what you're doing. As a fellow coach myself, I greatly appreciate, you know, all the hard work. So, um, all right. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of coaches... Mike Tomlin made a very big decision this week, and that decision was to bench Tit, tit Biscuits. Oh, I'm sorry. Did I say Tit Biscuits? I meant Mitchell Trubisky. Trubisky, yes. Um, so Kenny Pickett has been named the starter for Week 5 against Buffalo. And mm -hmm. Jason, I flash back before I ask you the question of thoughts on the change because... Last time the Chargers came to Buffalo, that was not in a pandemic, was Josh Allen's first start of his yeah, career. And no. we were in the stands for that. Okay. Now I get to be in the stands for yeah. Kenny Pickett's first yeah. uh, start, which is interesting. And your brother's a Steelers fan. So yep. that makes it very interesting. Now I, I, I just got to say that's awesome that we both get to witness that. I mean, I wish I know. I, I wish Herbert's uh, first start was in Buffalo. Come on, I got robbed. I know you did get robbed. Thank you, um, Chargers team doctor. But anyway, <laughs> I will say this now: it, it's interesting to see that um, they decided to pull the gun on it so soon, but. And sitting at one and three, I feel like Mike Tomlin kind of had no choice. Plus, the way that this Steelers team played under Kenny Pickett heading into that game, they damn near even won it. They were up like, um, I think like ten points on the. They played up against what the Jets. They were up ten points at one point. It was like twenty to ten. Um, when Kenny Pickett scored those two rushing touchdowns, I mean, yeah, he threw the three picks. But there was are just bad decisions, and I think you know he wasn't but really truly prepared. Learned, so. This week, this week, he you know he's going to be with the ones, practice with the ones all you know all that time. I think he's going to be a little bit more prepared for the team. But I hate to say it, Buffalo ain't going to be playing too kind against a rookie quarterback. I think Pickett might struggle in this game. Um, who knows? He might throw more picks against the Buffalo Bills. I hate to say it. It's going to be a rough ride, Steelers fans. I get it. That picket is definitely a lot better than Trubisky. And it, was, and it definitely showed in that game when he came in. Yeah. Um, but don't be shocked 
if it's just an onslaught for the Bills and the Steelers. But as far as the thoughts on the change, I like it. I think that he should have been starting from the start, to be honest with you. Because you should have, I feel like you should have taken a chance on him. He's a first round draft pick. You shouldn't have had him like sitting behind Trubisky. Trubisky, he just hasn't See, been as good since the Chicago days. He, I feel like he kind of proved even in Chicago that he just wasn't the guy. Um, mm-hmm. But even more it's so really with the Steelers, different. and you know, this time he doesn't have the dumb coach excuse to fall back on. Because Mike right. Tomlin is an experienced and you know well seasoned head coach in the league. Um, as mm. far as Kenny Pickett, I just want to forecast ahead real quick, and let's just say he has you know like I said, it just reminds me of Trevor Lawrence and his turnover ratio last year. Same with the uh, right. same with Zach Wilson. Um, and you see now that these year two quarterbacks, at least the last few years, have broken out. You know, Trevor Lawrence this year is having a breakout year, I would say. Um, you know, Justin Herbert. Marco to kind of um, yeah. get going, but like Herbert. He, after, like, after a while in that second half, he kind of got good. Yeah. Herbert, yeah, he was. Yeah, Herbert and Hurts. Both were breakouts last year, and Joe Burrow. I don't want to forget him. But mm-hmm. I, I feel like when I look at this class, there's just not that guy that speaks to me that says, man, you know, he's having a rough start, but year two, you know, laser focus on it. Like, I I mean, it's still early. I don't want to judge Kenny Pickett too much. I will right. say, though, I'm going to just kind of – disagree partially with what you're saying that it's going to be an onslaught because I feel like with no real footage on Kenny Pickett I mean you know yeah there was the second half of the last game but no one's really gotten a true gauge of what he can do just yet with the first team Mm -hmm. offense so I feel like you know the first two possessions maybe it's going to go Kenny Pickett's way but it's going to be up to the Bills to ultimately, you know, limit the damage. He, I, I don't want to say, you know, that they're going to come out there and just stomp him the first two. But I right. feel like it's going to be up to them to really limit the damage that he can do. Because, again, what I said about Jacksonville last week, young quarterback, young team buying into a veteran coach's system, you know, mm. and, you know, once they start buying in, things can turn dangerous real quick, you know. I mean, don't get me wrong. I do think that he can bring a different dynamic yeah. to the Steelers team heading into the Buffalo. Uh, yeah. Heading into Buffalo, yeah. uh, and, and I'm a little, you know, scared too because he he seems to be able to but, be a better yeah. pocket quarterback than Trubisky is he seems to read the field a lot better he can certainly throw the ball a hell of a lot better down in the middle than Trubisky can because apparently Trubisky is all hell bent on his first and second reads not his third or fourth yeah which at least can actually you know survey the field and like okay if I don't have a I don't have b I'm gonna throw it to Firemuth who is you know wide open in the middle there so I I think that Pickett is a lot more poised as a pocket yeah. quarterback than yeah. Trubisky is, but, and I think it's going to definitely show in this game against the, the Buffalo Bills. And I, if I'm the Buffalo Bills, I would be ready to mm-hmm. attack the you know the field for whatever kind of options he has yeah. and limit him. But, if I'm also Buffalo, since he's also a rookie quarterback, and the way that he's you know run the ball and had mm-hmm. success on it, I would try to bring as much pressure as you can. Yeah. Well, like I said, I feel like the first two drives you got to bring pressure, but again, I go back to you have to limit the damage that he does because if he starts scoring right out of the gates and he starts mm-hmm. buying into the system and, you know, oh, I know. like I said, you can't, it... you can't let him get momentum those first two drives. Like I said, take the first two, figure him out, limit the damage he can do because obviously you get his confidence up and it's going to be game over. Right. They could well, still well, win the well, game, it's but it's going to be game this over. This is also... The Buffalo Bills are also the best team to come out of halftime with the best yeah. kind of adjustments too. So, just because, like this, this could see, I feel this like could also it, be a game where they somehow 
like even if they like somehow have not like the yeah. strongest first yeah. half, don't be shocked if Buffalo like somehow comes out of the gate out of mm-hmm. the halftime a different kind of team. Yeah. And it's happened in this these first four but, games. But I'm going to be remiss to give you guys any benefit saying that it's going to be a blowout. I just don't... I don't think it's going to be a blowout. I think it's not going to be as close as people but may have. I may think, think it's going it to be, be close. That's the, that's the thing I want to get at there. I mean, it won't be as close without TJ Watt. I feel like TJ Watt would have been the big difference maker right there. Probably. You know, because, let's face it, he's not Aaron Donald. He's not, you know, no, the guy no, that, not. you know, <laughs> but he's certainly a guy that can beat up your offensive line and wear him down. Mm-hmm. And, you know, now you take that away. Um, I don't know the status of Minka. I believe he was on the injury report, too. But Probably. Again, Minka's another one of those game changers because if TJ Watt doesn't get to you, he's at the very least going to force you into a bad pass. And, right. Well, Buffalo does, definitely does get a lot of players that were hurt like the last few weeks coming back on limited practice. Um, the only one that's probably and truly not going to be, I think, might be um, Isaiah McKenzie as he's still out with concussion on a concussion protocol. Um don't know about Tremaine Edmonds per se. I know he hasn't been practicing, mm-hmm. but I don't think that's going to hurt as much. I mean, you still have Matt Milano. You have Tyler um, Medikovic. Um, so I, I think there's other options. I don't I don't think it's going to hurt so much. I mean, um, the only thing I would really truly watch out for is George Pickens, Chase Claypool, and Deontay Johnson. Um, and Najee. Most of Deontay more so Deontay Johnson than anybody else. I think if I am the Buffalo Bills defense, and I don't want to talk about this too too much more, I'm going to say this as my last thing, I would probably have Elam covering Deontay Johnson, one of our better corners on one of their better receivers. Hmm. But as far as that, let's go on That's... to MLB, MLB playoffs, yeah. our pick. We got it. Yeah, let's see. I mean, we got a decent bracket. I got to pull up the bracket. Uh, I was just going to say, I have no idea who else yeah, other than the Yankees. you might want to search it, but, um, you know, Houston's got the number one seed in the AL. Um, I believe Atlanta. No, wait, the Dodgers, I believe, got the um, top seed in the NL. So, let me double okay, check. So All right. I'm looking at the postseason 2022. We got the... Yeah. Mets and the Padres and Cardinals and Phillies on the wild card yeah. for NL. And then AL, you have the Blue Jays and Mariners and then the Guardians and the Rays. Mm-hmm. So, if I had to pick my choice for the okay. NL, I'm thinking the Mets over the Padres. And probably, mm-hmm. I'm thinking the upset. I'm going to say the Phillies over the Cardinals. Yeah, see, uh, man, the, Seattle's in their the first. Cardinals. I know they're the number three seed, but yeah, Seattle's in their first postseason since um, two thousand and one. Should we add? Yeah, but I feel it like they're be very be, short lived. Yep, short lived. The Blue Jays. Eh? Yep. <laughs> but I think the Blue Jays are going to win that. Now, as far as you know, ALCS. What I expect is it's going to be Yankees and Astros. Um, but if it's Tampa versus the Yankees, I don't know if it's going to be lower seed plays the higher seed, um, or whatnot. But I could tell you right now, I could see Tampa giving the Yankees problems. They've given them a few problems this year, so I just feel like it's a possibility again. Um, but I could tell you right now, I see Houston taking the AL, to be honest. I just, again, they've beaten the Yankees every single year. I get it, things can change this year, you know, and it might very mm. well, but I just don't see it, honestly. I feel like Houston's the better team overall. Um, and then as far as the NL, the NL is just so difficult to pick because I feel like San Diego... If they had Fernando Tatis, they might just be in a better situation. Um, Honestly, I'm thinking yeah. it might end up being Braves and Astros in the for the World Series yeah. finals. Honestly, yeah. 
I believe that's why I'm be, thinking that. I believe that'd be a rematch of last year, if I'm not mistaken. It could happen. So, but then again, it all depends on how the Dodgers do, too. I think it's going to be Houston and L.A., to be honest. I wouldn't even be shocked if it's the Mets because, you know, um, I feel like the Mets have had a good year as well. Um, you know, but the NL to me is so much tougher to predict because, you know, the AL, you just kind of look at it and you say, well, it's probably going to be the Yankees or Houston. But again, I feel like Houston's going to have the, uh, I feel like they're going to have the Yankees number again this postseason. And no, I don't think they're going to bang, they're going to bang trash cans to have their number. Okay. So stop (laughs) with that argument. Okay. Not you, but just everyone out there in general. Um, right. But all right. I'd say since we kind of made our picks there, um, you know, maybe now it's time to make some bigger picks here, some NFL picks. Um, Hold up. One, all right. one two, odds. Yep. All right. Sorry, I had to just pull up my... Uh, you know, ESPN right now. Yeah, all right. There we go. Here we go. So Giants and Packers, the second game in London. Again, I say this, stop sending teams to London. Um, but the Packers, for the first time ever over there, and they are favored by eight. I, I couldn't ju- – I'm just going to say this now as a, as a side note. I couldn't justify spending a $402 for an NFL game. I think that's insane. Even if it's over, yeah. uh, you know, overseas, that just. Mm-hmm. But this one's gonna be. This one's a tough one. I feel like to call. I don't know if I like that Green Bay is favored by eight. At least with your big name wireless. Carrier. Um, I think the Packers can, can beat the Giants. I'm not saying that. I just think that. You know, you eight might just be a little, you know, and Verizon. a little no, too much better. there. Yes, you can. I can do better too. But then again, Packers really haven't been all that strong of a team. And then somehow, I, it wouldn't shock me if the Giants like come into London and and beat the Packers to go four four and one. But I'm ultimately thinking it might be the Packers. I think the Packers are a stronger team. Rodgers is a better quarterback than Daniel Jones's, so I think he's going to find a way to win this game. Mm-hmm. But I don't know if Daniel Jones is playing, but I'm still going to go with the Packers here. Um, I just don't... I feel like it's going to be closer than eight points, though. I think the Giants seem to have something figured out. Um, Mm -hmm. But here we go. Steelers, Bills. Bills favored by 14. And let me tell you something. Tickets as low as 203, that is very accurate. (laughs) Mm -hmm. That was one expensive... uh, one expensive tickets I bought for for this game. This, I, I think it's insane. I think they should be a lot lower than what they were, especially for three hundred section. Mm-hmm. But I digress. As far as this, yes, I do agree. It's going to be the Buffalo Bills, but I think it might be a one score game. Fourteen, insanely, insanely generous to the Bills. I'm just going to say. I mean, that. it could be possible. I, I'm not saying that it um, wouldn't be possible. Well, it just yeah, I think it's just, gonna be more of a one score game. I I'm only saying it's insanely generous based on what we've seen so far this year. Okay, where mm-hmm. the unexpected is expected. So I'm gonna go with the Bills nonetheless. Um here we go. Chargers, Browns, Chargers favored by two and a half, and again they have a one o'clock game that I can't watch. Uh, well, it's not it's not gonna be televised anyway. I hate to say it. <laughs> well, I mean, like on you know Sunday Ticket or anything. Oh well, yeah, I, I mean, to watch that. Um, I'm probably gonna be pulling for the Chargers only because that defense I think is gonna be what's gonna really play the factor against the Browns. Hmm. But as far as anything else. Uh, this one it could be it could go literally anywhere. It, it could go anywhere. It could go any way. I, I, um, any team could win, honestly. But I'm ultimately pulling for the Chargers, and I think two and a half points is very. I, I think it's a good line. Eckler got his first touchdown last weekend. I feel like that gave him a lot of confidence. 
Um, Herbert played like Herbert before the rib injury. But again, I just don't like how they almost blew it against Houston. But I'm going to go with the Chargers, and I do like the line right there. Um, Vikings, Bears, Vikings favored by 7.5. Tell you what, this Vikings team is definitely, you know, proving the doubters wrong. I will say that now. Um, I'm going to have to go with the Vikings. This Bears team is just um, yep. not as good as I would have thought. I mean, they're very 2-2, two and two, I guess, is decent for a Bears team. I thought they would be a lot worse than that, but... Um, don't have a very great road record so far. And the Vikings are, I, I, I honestly, I'm going to say this now. I think this is the game where Justin Jefferson is really going to, I mean, last week he went off. This week I feel like he's going to go off again against the Bears. So I told you Justin Fields was a bum, but everyone insisted that I was wrong on it. Well, guess what? Who's Guess who's having the last laugh through four weeks of the season so far? Again, I'm going <laughs> to go with the Vikings here. Um, here we go. An interesting one. Lions and Patriots. And the reason I say this is interesting for two things. Number one, they play Matt Patricia, their old head coach, who is now... We don't know what no, he does with sure. New England. I find this interesting. He's not defense. He's offense yeah, this time. But, but we don't know what he is right now. That's the funny thing. He's just listed as a special assistant. Again, we don't know who's the but coordinator. But he's running the there. offense. It's we weird. don't know who the coordinator is. That's the funny thing. It's technically him, I guess, if you think about it. And then, of course, I think, yeah, the other I, interesting I'm thing. I'm sure that's what they said last week is that he was running play-calling duties for the offense. Yeah. But I was going to add the second most interesting thing. The Lions have the top-scoring offense in the NFL and the worst defense in the NFL. Yeah. I Talk don't about know a 180. But I think the Lions should honestly get rid of their defensive coordinator as of, like, now. <laughs> that should <laughs> they have a chance yesterday. of even making any sort of postseason yeah. uh, run. That said, um, that said, New England three-point favorites. Just because their defense is not that great, I'm going to have to go with the Patriots here. I, it's going to be Zappy starting, so I'm sorry. I got to go with Detroit here. He um, damn so, near beat, he almost beat the Patri the Packers last see, week. I'm sorry, but I, I feel like how much, you know, the fact that Detroit almost won last week against Minnesota, I believe it was. Or no, wait, who did they play last? They played somebody decent last week, and I just forgot. Like, yeah, it was the Vikings. I don't think so. I'm pretty sure it was. No, it was I'm the pretty sure it was the Vikings it was and Lions. Seahawks. They went toe to toe with Seattle last week without their starting running back and without their starting wide receiver, um, of course, Swift and Amonra, respectively. So that's why I just think the Lions are that team right now. And TJ is coming in on his own. Yeah, he is. So, he had, and he had, keep in mind. So those three touchdowns happened last week. Yeah, and keep in mind, there's no J.C. Jackson oh. on the on the Patriots' defense to stop him. Right, that's very true. It's kind of hard to believe that Jamal Williams is I think, leading the team in yeah. touchdowns with six. That's insane. He's exactly. a backup running back, too. <laughs> exactly. But um, here we go. Oh, man, talk about a team with bad luck. Here we go. Saints, Seahawks. Saints favored by five and a half. Uh, I don't know where they say that the Saints are going to win this game. Absolutely not. It's going to be the Seahawks. Wow. Yeah, I don't think Andy Dalton's a good quarterback, but the Seahawks, look at their two wins. They've won sloppy. So... I. I don't feel they can get away with that against New Orleans. I'm going to have to go New Orleans for this one. Um, but See, all right, go on, sorry. Sorry, I was just going to go to the next game, but if you got a point here. No, the only point I was making is like, Saints, 
one and three. Look at that home record. Hmm. I understand that like it's that could get game. broken any time now, but they don't play well in their own home um, stadium this year. I don't give a crap what kind but of Seahawks team we're going to get. The you know, home team. They were considered the home team. They were considered. And I think he's going to be up on their face. They were considered the home team in London, so technically that was their second home game. So you can't count that. Whatever. You can't count it. Um, but Dolphins, Jets, um, Miami favored by three and a half. No Tua at all in this game. Game, um, Zach Wilson is going to be starting. <sighs> I'm going to probably go with the Dolphins over the Jets, but I, I just don't totally buy Teddy Bridgewater. Honestly, in a system, I guess I especially against a Jets team that. Might surprise a lot of people. Hmm. I, I mean, I would love to pull for the Jets over the Dolphins. I really would, but I think it's going to be the Dolphins are going to go to four and four and one. Jets are middle of the road. I feel like the Dolphins are that team that's definitely going to be in play for the six or the seven. Um, so I'm going to go with the Dolphins here. Um, you know, Falcons, Buccaneers. This is one, you know, nine and a half is the um, spread there. Right. <sighs> I don't know, honestly. I mean, I want to say Buccaneers at home, but the Falcons, I guess it all depends on what kind of Bucks team we're going to get. Are we going to get Tom Brady, you know, where he's going to be throwing all over the Falcons, or are we going to get a Tom Brady that's been kind of up and down this year? Uh, we don't truly know. So, I'm going, to, I'm going to say Buccaneers. But I think it's going to be a lot closer than 9.5. This is one I think I'm willing to put a guarantee on, okay? This is one where I think this is a no shit, and I'm going to go with the Buccaneers. I'm... Fully guaranteeing the Bucks win. And this is the first time I'm ever going to say that on air with an NFL Guaranteed. prediction. Guarantee. <laughs> Except it's not Chuck, so take it for what it is. Um, Titans, <laughs> Titans, Commandos, and Titans are favored by a point and a half. Honestly, the Commanders, I'm kind of shocked that they're one and three. I thought that, you know... Carson Wentz, after that week one, you know, was yeah, going to end up beat down. making the commanders really good. Oh, well, that was a definitely a lie. <laughs> um, Titans have been very up and down this year, <laughs> but I think that they're going to get a win here against the commanders on the road. Mm -hmm. I'm going to agree. Titans win that. Um, I don't think I need to explain it. Carson Wentz just went back. Um, but... Texans, Jags, Jags favored by seven. Yeah, Jags are going to win this game. Texans are just a disaster piece. Jags, but I will say the one bright spot in all this is Damian Pierce. He is he is really coming to his own as RB one. So yes, he is. Um, and he's a what a rookie running back too. Yeah, a rookie running back, one that we didn't expect to start week one. But um, moving ahead to the four oh fives. Um, you know, or the four o'clocks is what I should say. 49ers, Panthers, 49ers favored by six and a half. Hey, Jimmy Garoppolo is going to show that he's still worth something. Even if he gets traded after the season, um, I think he's going to go into Carolina and get and beat up on the Panthers. So I'm going to say 49ers. Yeah, I think it's going to be 49ers. Um, I do think McCaffrey's going to have a good game, though. Um, mm -hmm. But Cowboys, Rams, Rams favored by five and a half. I'm going to pull the upset. I'm going to say the Cowboys or the Rams. You and I think I... Cooper Rush. I really do think that Cooper Rush has really changed this team around. 
And I, I'm going to say Cooper Rush is going to honestly beat up on the Super Bowl champs. I'm really leaning the same way, believe it or not. I'm going to go with the Cowboys. I never thought that Cooper Rush would lead this team to where they're at. I thought for sure they'd be 1-3, and 1-4 and four, if you count this week. But... Man, I thought that... You know what, Cooper that, Rush is helping McCarthy keep yeah. his job right now, and it's kind of crazy. And, and McCarthy's a shit coach, but he's got a quarterback that fits his system. I don't know why he wants to go back to Dak, but hey, you know, your choice. Um, well, Dak's also making a hell of a lot of money, so it would make a hell of a lot of sense to have Dak Prescott back as your starter when he comes back fully healthy. Hey, it say. made a lot of sense to keep Jimmy G as the starting quarterback, but you didn't see that happen at the start of the year. I mean, that's true, too. <laughs> All right. Eagles, Cardinals. Eagles favored by five. I'm going to have to say the Eagles. They're going to go into Arizona and they're going to beat up on, <laughs> beat up on them. No D-hop, no problem. Okay, that's all I'm going to leave it at because I think you can tell I'm going for the Eagles. Um, but I just got to say this before we go to the Sunday night game. Jalen Hurts just stepped, he just walked into the MVP race, okay? Um, you know, uh, he's, to yes, me, to no. me he's walked in. I feel like he I'm so, so more so, I feel like he would would have would be if he had more than just four thrown touchdowns. Yeah. The yards, maybe he could be in that discussion. The touchdowns, only four mm-hmm. touchdowns with the kind of team that he has. That, but that's, he's winning games. And I know he's winning And he's games. doing it with his legs, too. Sanders do, but He's doing it with uh, his legs, too. That's the other thing. So, um, but anyway. Honestly, Jalen Hurts is showing that, like, he, he you know, he's like, a, a Kyler Murray, but better. That's yeah. what he's kind of showing to me. But all right, yeah. With that, though, because we're running close here. Bengals, Ravens, Baltimore favored by three. I I don't like that. I really don't like that. I'm gonna have to go with the Bengals. I feel like the mm-hmm. Ravens gonna somehow find a way to blow a lead and lose. Bengals have gone all in. They've gone mega aggressive on their offense the last few weeks. Um, and it's paying off for them. So I just feel like the Bengals have this game in hand. Um, mm-hmm. Now, I said that expect the unexpected, but I feel like this one's kind of a guarantee on Monday night. Raiders, Chiefs. Oh, yeah. Uh, Chiefs are going to be up on the Raiders. Mm-hmm. hate to say it, Raiders fans, but this season Your you can probably sucks. just get a good pie at this point. <laughs> yeah. I'm not even going to make the pick. You know who I've already taken. Um, Commanders-Bears is the Thursday night game. Washington favored by a point. I'm probably going to say Bears over the Commanders. Uh, I'm not really 100% sold on the Commanders, but who knows? Mm-hmm. I'm going to say Commanders here. I feel like they got the better all-around team. So, with that, um, I think they're going to win the game. All right. Sunday morning, or Sunday morning, it's Tinkle on this time. Um, Of course, if you watched the Manning cast, um, you saw a streaker run on the field with a pink flare. So, I'm assuming a gender reveal. Well, guess what? If that's the dad of the baby... He's no longer the father, okay? The new father is Bobby Wagner because yeah, Bobby he don't care Wagner, about your <laughs> this guy could not be caught by security. So Bobby Wagner just comes out of nowhere on the sidelines and just lays and one of the hardest crap. hits. Yeah, he laid one of the hardest hits on the streaker. And, of course, then security took him out. Well, now the streaker is filing to press charges, but first off, you were trespassing on a football field. So good luck even trying to get yeah. any kind of compensation for this. Maybe you can for like a little bit for like maybe the hit itself, but yeah. you shouldn't have even gone into onto the field. It was a legal let hit. Alone even, even get out of your seat to even attempt to do it. 
in the first place. It was. I just want to know what goes through the minds of these creatures yeah. that they then think, oh, well, I think I can go on the football field. I can just run around and not get caught. Like, wh- wh- I want to just want to know what the fuck goes through their what mind. What goes through their mind? More like what goes through their mouth. And I'm talking the beers and, you know, all that. True. First, but I want to know why they let him go into the game with the flair. Okay. Yeah, I want to know the same most, thing. Most like, stadiums I think security needs for these football games most, needs to be a lot more stricter. I get it, some stadiums are more so than not, but most I think stadiums, a lot more of these stadiums need to be stricter. Same thing with Buffalo, with most, the whole, you know, if anybody remembers the whole dildo being on the, thrown on the see, field. But that's not an object that could injure somebody. A flare could. That's but, true. It could blind and damage vision, too. So, see, But... Yeah, so Bobby Wagner, first off, round of applause to you. You got a future as a security guard after your career. To the streaker, I hope you win nothing in court. I certainly hope your baby girl is healthy, but I certainly hope that you will wise up and be a good dad because certainly you did not prove, you did not pass dad 101 by streaking on the field. And for that, tinkle on this, my friend. Yeah, damn right, tinkle on this. Bobby Wagner. You're one hell of a freaking giant, mm. and uh, congratulations on decking the living crap out of that guy because with a legal hit yeah. too, with a legal hit. Eh, if it even was he, illegal, what difference does it make? It's a streaker; it's justified. Mm. Freaking damn near freaking take his oh ass out. <laughs> All right, speaking of justified hits, what's coming up on no final bell? Well, ladies and gentlemen, we are heading. Um, we just headed off. Hold up one second. Let me uh, see more of my notes there for that. So um, we had our championship celebration for um, Chris Jericho. There was a lot that was going on with that itself. Um, you know, more going on with Brian Danielson and our Brian Danielson and um, Chris Jericho, then Wheel of Utah and MGF. Um, you know, there's a lot more that's going on with leading into uh, next week's um, champion, you know, three-year anniversary, which did happen. I mean, we're a little behind the, the mark itself, but um, you know, a lot of things that are going on with, with that as we are heading more into full gear for next month. So I don't know what's going to be truly going on with the matches with that, but what is going on for out of turn four? Playoffs continue the Roval today. Um, man, we had one of the cleanest Talladega races. We, of course, recapped that last week, but again, we will recap the Roval. Which drivers advanced to the round of eight in both the NASCAR Xfinity and the NASCAR Cup Series? So you will want to tune in for that. Also, some news from Colleg Racing. And even bigger news from AJ Foyt Racing, um, you know, I'm excited about the AJ Foyt one. You'll want to tune in for that because I think you're going to get some excitement. Um, man, a lot of silly season news coming in. That's most of our show now. Um, but again, that's Tuesday at 5 um, on YouTube, Facebook, Watch, No Final Bell. Um, Wednesdays, 5, on, 5 p.m. on YouTube and Facebook, Watch. So... All right, with that, we thank you for watching. Be sure to tune in next week. We'll be back with another edition of Sunday Morning Tinkle. Till then, goodbye, everyone. Peace out. Peace out, bitches. <laughs> <laughs> okay.